Hello everyone. Welcome back to this online class. Today we are going to look at applications of first order ordinary differential equations. And in particular, we are going to look at the growth and decay problems. Now, before we look at examples in population growth and decay, let us take note that uh, in many natural phenomena, I'm going to write, you write in many natural phenomena, in many natural phenomena, comma, quantities grow or decay, quantities, quantities grow or decay, that should be decay, decay at a rate that is directly proportional at a rate that is directly proportional to their size. Full stop. Now, this is what it means that uh, if we let, let P be the population at any time t, then that statement means that uh, derivative of p with respect to t is proportional to p. That is what it means. And so you can get rid of the proportionality symbol by introducing a constant of proportionality. So this is the same as writing dp dt is equals to k times p. So where k is the constant of proportionality. So this one is now the ODE, is the ODE governing the population growth or decay. or decay. K, you can take note that K here denotes the constant of proportionality. Constant of proportionality. Now, remember, K can either be zero when k is equals to zero, then it means there's no, no growth or decay. No growth, stroke decay. That means the population is constant. The population is constant. When k is greater than zero, it means there is growth in the population. And when k is a value that is less than zero, it means the population decays. To decay means a decrease in population. To grow means the population increases. So having explained those critical uh, information in population growth and decay, let's look at some examples. We'll, we'll look at three examples. Let's start with the first one. We write example one. Example number one. So we are going to write it, the question in example number one. So in example one, we are given this question that uh, 
the population of a certain community is known to increase at a rate that is directly proportional to the number of people present at any time t. If the population has doubled in 10 years, how long will it take for the population to triple? So let's analyze this information before we solve it. So you write solution, uh, solution. First of all, we need to analyze the information. We have time, time denoted by T and now time is in days. And we have the population. Let the population at any time T to be equal to P. That represents the number of people. So uh, let's see what we have. We know that uh, when time is equals to zero, let the population be equal to a P naught is a constant value. Now, again, we are told that after 10 days, when T is equals to 10, the population has doubled. So that is two times P naught. Another question is, how long will it take? When will the population triple? Three times P naught. How long will it take for the population to triple? So there's a question mark here. We need to find time when the population is three times P naught. Now, we also know that uh, the rate at which the population is growing is proportional to the number of people present at any time T. So from here, we can come up with the ODE governing this uh, problem. So the ODE for this problem is that uh, dp dt is equals, not equal to, but proportional. is directly proportional to p. And from here, you can get the ODE now, an equation. When you get rid of the proportionality symbol. So here we'll have dp over dt is equals to k times p, where k is the constant of proportionality. So this equation is separable. This is separable ODE. Let us solve it. So first of all, we need to separate the variables. When you separate the variables, we are going to get uh, dp over p is equals to k dt. And then now we need to integrate both sides. You have the limits of integration. When time is zero, population is P naught. So I'll write here, integrating from T is equals to zero uh, when the population is equals to P naught. And then also when time is 10, population is two P naught. So here now we have 10 and here we have two P naught. So that when we integrate this, we are going to get ln p is equals to, of course, there are limits of integration, so let me add them. Ln p from p naught to 2 p naught. This should be equal to kt. And the limits are from 0 to 10, 0 to 10. When you plug in the limits of integration, what are we going to get? We are going to get lean 2 p naught minus lean of p naught is equals to k 10 minus 0. So from here, we can easily find the value of k. So on the left hand side, let's apply the second law of logarithms. 
so you can write or log of two p naught over p naught is equals to 10 k so therefore the value of k here will be equal to 1 over 10 times log 2 remember the p naught will cancel with this the other p naught so we have that as the value of k so i can bracket this again that is the constant of proportionality and the value is positive that means this population is growing now look at the third condition what is the time when the population is three times p naught so i'll use this first condition and the third condition to determine the time t so you can write here similarly uh, let's write here similarly you can also integrate dp over p is equals to k dt and now our limits are when t is equals to zero p is equals to p naught now i don't know the time when the population is three p naught that's what i need to determine so when i integrate this what will we get we are going to get ln p and the limits are from p naught to three p naught is equals to kt and in this case our limits are from 0 to t 0 to t so let's plug in the limits of integration on the left hand side this is what you have you can write or log of 3 p naught minus log of p naught is equals to k into t minus 0 or log of 3 p naught over p naught is equals to k which we know the value 1 over 10 times log 2 times t. So now make t the subject. Remember this will cancel with this so that we have log 3. So we can say therefore t is equals to log 3 over 1 over 10 times log 2. So when you press this, what do we get? Let's press that in a calculator. So I'll start by pressing log three, get the answer. Divide by log two, get uh, what is the answer? And then we also dividing by one over 10, that's the same as multiplying by 10. So you're going to get 15 point, uh, let me write it here. 15.2. Nine six two five zero one. If I round up to two DP, I'm going to get fifteen point eight five. The time is in days, so this is days. So that means after about fifteen point eight five days that population shall have tripled. Was it days or years? That is in years. It should be in years, not days. So you can just change here. Because it is not possible for population to, to triple in just days. So this is supposed to be years. And even the other one is years. So I'll change it. 
If all this one should, should be yes. So that means after about 15.85 years, the population shall have tripled. Now let's look at another example. We write example two. Again, this is still an example on population growth and decay. So we are going to write the question for example two. So in example two, we are given this question that a company is using newspaper advertising to introduce a new product to a community of 50,000 people. It was assumed that uh, the rate at which people learn about the new product is directly proportional to the product of the number of people who have heard about it and the number of people who have not heard about it. If 100 people were aware of the product initially and 500 people were aware about it after 10 days of the campaign, in part A, how many people will be aware of the product after 20 days? In part B, when will half of the community be aware of the product? So let's analyze again this uh, statement so that we can see how to form the ODE for this problem. So you can write solution. Remember we have time Time we are going to denote that by t, and now the time is in days. Then we have the population. We are going to use p. Now this p is the population, the, the number of people who have heard about the product at any time t. That's what we mean by that population. So now from the given information, and this is, let me underline this and also this, I want us to take note that P means the number of people, number of people who have heard about the product at any time t. So what are we told that uh, initially when time is zero days, 100 people have heard about the product. After, after 10 days, of the campaign, those people who have heard about the product are now 500. You see that number keeps on growing. Now in part A, we need to know after how, or simply how many people will be aware of the product after 20 days. So when time is 20, how many people will be aware of the products? That is part A. That is part A. And in part B, we are asked uh, to determine or simply when will half of the community be aware of the product. Now we need the time when we don't know that time. A question mark. And we know the population to be half of the target population. Remember, that our target, target population was equals to 50,000. We want 50,000 people to be aware of this new product. So now in part B, you are asked, when will half of the community be aware of the product? Half of 50,000, that is 25,000.
That is the question. So now we can be able to form the ODE. Look at this statement here, uh, where it was assumed that from here, the rate at which people learn about the new product is directly proportional to the product of the number of people who have heard about the product and the number of people who have not heard about it. Look at this statement. This is what will help you form the ODE. The statement that I've bracket, bracketed is what is useful for us. So we know the people who have heard about the product at any time t. And your target is that 50,000, at the end of the campaign, 50,000 people should be able to hear about this new product. So it means therefore that uh, 50,000 minus P, this one is the number of people number of people who have not heard about the product at any time t. So from the given information, we are told that dp, that rate dp dt is proportional to the product of those who have heard about the product and those who have not heard about it, 50,000 minus p. That's what we are told from that statement. And so from here, we can be able to come up with the ODE governing that problem, get rid of the proportionality symbol. So introduce a constant of proportionality so that our ODE in this case will be dp dt is equals to a constant k p then times five uh, 50,000 minus p. So this one is the ODE governing that campaign of a new product. So I can comment here and write, this is the ODE governing the campaign of the new product. Campaign of the new product. This equation can be classified as separable. It is also Bernoulli's. So you could solve it as separable ODE or a Bernoulli's ODE. Let us solve it as separable equation. Let's separate the variables to get uh, dp over uh, p times 50,000 minus p is equals to k dt. So I need to integrate both sides. On the left, we are going to use partial fractions because I can see the denominator consists of products of two linear factors. So you can say let, use another color, let uh, 1 over p times 50,000 minus p be equal to a constant a over p plus another constant b over 50,000 minus p. So those are partial fractions. 
is a bracket. If I multiply it through by the LCM, I'm going to get this. A times 50,000 minus P. Plus B times P. That should be able to give us one. So this equation here is true. This equation is true for any value of P that you choose. For instance, if I put P is equals to zero, it means the term containing B will vanish so that we only have 50,000 A is equals to one. And so from here, you can make A the subject. So you get that A is equals to one over 50,000. If I want to find B, I can decide to put P is equals to 50,000. So that means the term containing A will vanish. So we simply have 50,000 B is equals to one. When you make B the subject, we are going to get B is equals to one over 50,000. So then I can rewrite uh, the integrand on the left-hand side in terms of those partial fractions. So it means, therefore, that uh, this integral can now be written as the integral of 1 over 50,000 times 1 over p then plus one over 50,000 minus P. This is integral with respect to P is equals to the integral of K. Of course, K is a constant, factor that out, then integrate dt. If I multiply both sides by 50,000, what will I get? So multiply through by 50,000, so you can just say, or the integral of uh, 1 over P minus, you know, that should be a plus, remember, this is now 1 over 50,000 minus P. Integrate with respect to P is equals to 50 thousand k times the integral of dt and so when you integrate the left hand side you need to get natural log of p that should be now a minus when you use u substitution you get natural log of fifty thousand minus p right hand side we get fifty thousand kt plus a constant c1 of integration. C1, you must introduce, when you don't have the limits, you introduce a constant of integration. So the task is, is uh, to make p the subject. So this can also be written as, you can say, or is the same as the natural log of P over 50,000 minus P. That is the second law of logarithms is equals to a 50,000 KT plus a constant C1. If I take exponential on both sides, what do we get? We are going to have P over 50,000 minus P. 
is equals to exponential 50,000 kt plus c1. I remember this you can also write as exponential 50,000 kt times exponential c1 which is another constant you can call it c2 so this you can write as a constant let's call it uh, maybe c2 times exponential 50,000 kt so how do we make p the subject that is the question this means that or p is equals to c2 exponential 50,000 kt then times album cross multiplying then times 50,000 minus p. So that uh, I want to combine those p's into one thing. This can also be written as, let me use another color, p. Then now if I take this to the left hand side, the, the negative p times c2 exponential that, it will now be plus c2 exponential 50,000 kt times another p is equals to c2 times 50,000 exponential 50,000 kt. So, or let's, let's factor out p. p times 1 plus c2 exponential 50,000 kt that's what we have is equals to c2 times 50,000 times exponential 50,000 kt so now divide through by or simply make p the subject so you can just say or p will now be equal to c2 times 50,000 times exponential 50,000 kt this one is divided by 1 plus c2 exponential 50,000 kt and uh, you see this can be simplified further look at uh, if i multiply numerator and denominator by c2 uh, times exponential 50,000 kt it was negative because I want to get rid of uh, that exponential from the numerator. So what I'll do here, I'll multiply the numerator by 1 over C2 times exponential negative 50,000 kt. Also, do the same in the denominator. 1 over C2 times exponential 50,000 kt. Of course, this negative, the same thing. So, you see now the C2 will cancel with this other one. And this will cancel with this. Because that will be exponential zero, which is one. 
Again, the whole of this denominator should multiply what we have here so that uh, what we'll get upon multiplication is, uh, you can write or P is equals to, now in the numerator we have 50,000. Let me write it properly. 50,000. Denominator will have 1 over C2 exponential negative 50,000 kT. Then plus, the other one will give us 1. But I can say let 1 over Z2 be another constant, call it C. So let, let C be equal to 1 over Z2. So therefore, this can now be written as, you can say that therefore, our P is now equal to 50,000, everything divided by one plus C2, not C2, but now it is C, exponential negative 50, that should be zero, negative 50,000 kT. So this is the population at any time t. Remember we have used the method of separable what it is. You could also use Bernoulli's uh, simply integrating factor solve as a Bernoulli's equation. I think it would be simpler than what we have done, but you are going to get the same same answer. Now, let us find the value of k and also the value of C. Go back to the conditions. The conditions given that, uh, I'm going back to the table. When time is uh, zero, the population is 100. So we are going to apply this. And also when time is 10, the population is 500. So we are going to apply this. And also when time is 10, population is 500. So that will help us find the value of uh, the constant C and the other constant K. Once we have done that, then we'll answer part A and part B. So let's start with time zero and P is 100. So we simply write here that uh, put put uh, time is equals to zero and p is one hundred. So what are we going to get? We are going to get uh, one hundred, which is p is equals to now it is 50,000 over one plus. That should just one plus C because anything raised to zero is, is one. So you can make C the subject. Let's see from here, what do we get as the value of C? So what you do is to cross multiply so that one plus C is equals to 50,000 over 100, which is simply 500. So one plus C is 500. So C will be 500 minus one, which is 499. That's what you get as the value of the constant C. Now we can also use the other condition to find the value of K. So the other condition you can write here, put 
Now time was it was ten days. And uh, what about the population? It's five hundred. When you make this substitution, what do we get? You're going to get 500 is equals to 50,000 over one plus. Our C is now 499, 499 times exponential negative. Now K, we don't know K, but we know T is equal to 10. So this is negative 500,000, that is five. Negative 500,000 K. So are we able to find the value of K? Yes, just cross multiply. You see we'll have one plus four nine nine times that exponential function is equals to uh fifty thousand over five hundred. So I can write and say or one plus four nine nine exponential negative five hundred thousand k is equals to fifty thousand over five hundred and then you can simplify that will give us one hundred so now let, let's take the one to the right hand side can say or 499 over exponential 500,000 K is equals to 99. So this simply means that uh, I can also talk of exponential 500,000. K is equals to 499 over 99. So now take log on both sides or 500,000 K is equals to natural log of 499 over 99. This is nine. That should be nine. So let me write it in a better way. So what is K? We now divide both sides by 500,000. So you can just say that therefore, K is equals to one over 500,000. times log <laughs> excuse me so that's times log uh, 499 over 9 9 so now we know the value of k and the value of c we can now replace them back and get our solution so let, let me replace it so that P is, uh, is equals to 50,000 over 1 plus C exponential negative 50,000 KT. So you can just say here that uh, hence P will now be equal to 50,000 divided by one plus our c is four nine nine four nine nine 
times exponential. Now I want negative 50,000 times K. What will it be? Take note. Take note that uh, I need 50,000 times K. That will simply be equal to 50,000 over 500,000 log of 499 over 99. So that's the same as, let, let's simplify. These are how many zeros? There are four and another four. So that's simply one over 10. One over 10. One over 10 times log 499 over 99. So that's what we have as the value of K. So remember it was negative 50,000 times KT. So what I do, I substitute that there. So this will give us negative one over 10 times log 499 over 99 and this multiplying t. Of course, this you could always uh, simplify. Look at that exponential function. And remember, 1 over 10 is the same as 0 0.1. So that's 0 0.1t, negative of 0 0.1t times log 499 over 99 which when you use the loss of indices, this can as well be written as 50,000 over one plus 499. Now that exponential function can be written as 499 over 99 raised to negative 0 0.1t. I've used the loss of indices and logarithms so that t will be the power of 49 and over 99 and also negative 10 becomes the power and negative 10 is the same as uh, 0 point, negative 0 0.1. So now let's answer part A. In part A, what are we told that how many people will be aware of the product after 30 days? Not 30, but 20 days. So it's just find P when uh, T is 20. Find P when T is equals to 20. Let us substitute. So what will be P? So P will be equal to 50,000. Everything over 1 plus 499 times 499 over 99. And this raised to uh, t is 20, so 20 times uh, 0 0.1, that is uh, 2, so this raised to negative 2. So what is the answer? Let's press. We start with 499 over 99, 499 divided by 99. The answer you have found, you raise it to negative 2, negative 2, get the answer, then times 499, get your answer then plus one, that will give us 20.64. So it's like we have 50,000 uh, divided by 20.64128. So we write 50, 
thousand divided by the answer we have found that will give us twenty four twenty two point three three so the population is uh, twenty four twenty two point three three that's the number of people who will be aware of the product after 20 days and you see you population there's no decimal so you can truncate those ones so that we have 24 22 people those are the people who will be aware of that product after 20 days 24 22 people Part B. Part B. Now we we need to know the time when the population will ha will be half of fifty thousand. So now here you find t. Find t. When p is twenty five thousand. So again, is aptitude. I don't know time, but I know population to be 25,000. So write 25,000 is equals to 50,000. That should be zero. 50,000 over one plus. 499 times another 499 over 99 raised to negative 0 0.1 t. So make t the subject. So this simply means that uh, if I divide by 50,000 or if I cross multiply, I'm going to get this 1 plus 499 times 499 over 99 raised to negative 0 0.1 t should be equal to 50,000 50,000 you divide by 25,000 And when you divide, you're going to get two. So again, remember we, are, we want to make t the subject. So what do we do next? You're going to say, or 499 times 499 over 99, remember this is nine, raised to negative 0 0.1 t, should be equal to, I, I'm going to take the one to the right hand side, so I'm going to get one. Two minus one is one. So divide by 499. So this means that uh, now 499 over 99 raised to negative 0 0.1 t. That is, uh, of course, you see, when you divide this, what you get, now instead of negative, it becomes positive 0 0.1 t. 0 0.1 t. That is the same as 499. I hope you've seen what I've done. What I've done is to divide through by this and then apply the loss of indices so that the negative now becomes positive when, it, when you take it up. So we get it this way. So that means I'll take the log on both sides. So you can just write log, log this 499 over 99 raised to 0 0.1 t is the same as log 
0.499. So apply the third law of logarithms on the left hand side or 0.1t is the same as log 499 divided by log 499 over 99. What is the answer here? Let's let's press. We need log 499. Get the answer. Then divide by log 499 over 99. That will give us 3.8409. 3.8409. Uh, so then how do we get t? Multiply both sides by 10 or divide both sides by 0 0.1. So you can just say that therefore our t is equals to, that should be 3.8409 divided by 0 0.1. And so that is equal to 38. Point four zero nine. The time was in days. So after about thirty eight days, the number of people who will hear about the product will be half of the target population. So that means uh, in around seventy or seventy something or about eighty days everyone shall have heard about the product so i won't look at example number three because it's just related to what we have done in example number two so thank you all for watching this video please subscribe to my youtube channel that is professor francis okage when you go to the youtube search type francis okage or prof francis okage and you will find me right there also, don't forget to comment, like, and share this video. When you meet next time, we look at more problems on applications of first order ODEs. Bye-bye.